good morning, good morning. Day one of healthy lifestyle changes. Success. So far, day two, check. I've already gone on a long walk. I snagged my nail somehow. Uh, already prepped my dinner. Just because I like a kitchen clean by the time I'm through with dinner. That is not my fault. That is my ex-mother-in-law's fault. Because as she cooked, and that's who taught me how to cook. I, my mom did not keep, teach me how to cook. Um, I grew up watching her, and I may have picked up tips here and there, but she never cleaned up. Because she had three girls afterwards to clean up the mess. And granted, she was not a messy cook or anything. But um, I had... My mother-in-law would like... Chop the onions. Because in southern cooking, onions went everywhere. <laughs> just about. And she'd have the knife in the dishwasher. And then she'd put them in the pan and fry them. Or whatever she was going to do with them. Um, she would have pork chops... In flour and egg. And by the time she finished that, those pans were in the dishwasher. And when she was done with dinner, when we were ready to sit down to eat dinner, because I lived with them for like a year and a half, um, she had the pan that she was serving our food out of, which she never put it in like a serving plate or a silvering bowl or whatever. It was served from the skillet or what, usually a skillet in the South, usually a skillet. And a um, black, what are those called? iron words y'all know my words my mom had one of those kind of skillets too but um and used it every day uh we have one but we haven't seasoned ours right i don't think we don't use it often enough you, i think you need to use it every day anyhow anyhow sidetrack um by the time we sat down to eat dinner what she had served what our food was cooked in was already the, the, the dishes were in the sink or they were going to be in the sink when we were finished. That was it. And then our our plates and cups and everything and silverware was brought to the counter. And as she got up, she went straight to the dishwasher and started loading it. Or I loaded it, loaded it or her daughter, um, my ex-sister-in-law. Although she was pretty young. She was born way much later. Anyhow. What was I saying? Why was I saying all this? Oh, so anyhow, I making I made the prep. It's in the skillet. It's in the refrigerator, which is balsamic chicken with mushrooms. And my husband grilled the chicken last night. And this was off of the Diabetes Food Hub or something like that website. And um, yeah, that's I'm borderline. So we're trying to back it up some years <laughs> or, or maybe never. Um it does run in my family. Yikes, 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 yikes. Anyhow. Uh, it, it's all in the skillet. And then I, I can have basmati rice. So I'll have, because I do like basmati rice. My husband doesn't. <laughs> We're going to be cooking two things of rice. Um, and then like a sliced tomato or something like that on the side. Or what did we have last night? Oh, we had green beans. And oven brown potatoes, but they were browned. They were baked in the the oven, and they had, uh, what do you call it? I'm sure this is riveting for all of you. Sorry, um, like Thousand Island dressing, not Thousand Island ranch dressing seasoning that can go on a lot of stuff. I'm sure if I made my own, it'd be even better. Right now, <laughs> anything is better than what I was doing. Um, I really, since Christmas, we had a, an emotional Christmas and, uh, since then I have been terrible and it has shown, um, and it shows everywhere. My Hobonichi is very boring for the first three months of the year, first two months of the year. Um, it shows everywhere and I'm trying to hide it, but sometimes, anyhow, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but anyhow, so what did I eat yesterday? This is what I ate. I ate oatmeal. With apple slices and cinnamon. Uh, I had a snack of a dip. Which has uh, low fat cottage cheese and Greek yogurt. With that ranch dressing. Just, just a tiny bit. Goes a long ways. And mixed in it. And then um, yellow pepper, orange pepper and celery sticks. Dipped in that. That was a snack. For lunch I had the same thing again. But I added a a couple slices of tomatoes with uh, balsamic 
vinaigrette, the really thick kind, just a tad, just a tad for flavor. <laughs> and I figured since I was using balsamic today, balsamic wasn't so bad in small doses. Uh, for dinner, we had steak because it's high in protein and uh, oh, green beans in the oven just baked on a cookie sheet, what they call cookie sheet meals, which I kind of like doing those because you put everything on a cookie sheet and it's done at the same time. And it's easy cleanup if you use parchment paper. <laughs> so um, I had the potatoes like that because I had soaked them, soaked them all day in a tiny little bit of canola oil and that ranch dressing and just enough for flavoring, not to be coated or anything. And the green beans too. And then when I put them on the cookie sheet, they baked and it was good. It was good. I mean, I, I love eating like that. <sighs> Obviously, I love anything but except for Chinese or Vietnamese food. Did not like Vietnamese foods. That was the only disappointment in that trip. Well, the basic disappointment in that trip was the food. I love Chinese food. I love Thai food. I love um, Japanese food. Not, not sushi particularly, unless it's cooked. Um, but oh, the Vietnamese food, it was rubbery and gooey. They use a lot of something that makes things gooey. Didn't like it. That's neither here nor there. We have talked and talked and talked. Let's get going. And thank you. Yesterday I had some very nice comments. Thank you. I always get nice comments, but they were particularly nice. Solidarity and appreciation from me and back and forth. Thank you. Okay. Page 55. I forgot what we were going to even do. And I guess I could pick out some different mushrooms. I thought about that last night. I'm like, I could pick out different mushrooms maybe. But anyhow, we're, we're moving on. Oh, yeah, these guys. Okay. This is going to be very abstract, really abstract. And what was I doing from here? 55. Pit helmet. Yes. <laughs> the words these days. That's 55. Oh, was this 55? No, that's 57. Okay, that's 55. Oh, yeah, the rattlesnake grass. Okay. Okay, we can handle that. 55, rattlesnake grass. Okay. Somehow, some way represented. And these ladies. I'm going to put this down here on a little stack of stuff and see if I can't let that help me a little bit. Here's my thing. Here's my... Oh, I didn't say what I was going to do, I guess. I think I'm going to do this whole thing but in shades of paper dark here dark here dark here dark here super light in the middle medium on the edges and just see what happens just see what happens should it be brown yes do i have enough brown Ugh, i don't know I don't know. I could transfer some stuff and make it brown. Transform. Ooh. That could be transformed. I have this. Oh, that might work. I'm still picking out of the same envelope that I've been picking out of. Little by little, it's going down. I've added a little bit. I have that too. And I could add brown to that a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think I pulled that out the other day. So that, that should get us going here. I also, I wanted to show you something. I have too much stuff going on here. Um, I did these on Procreate. This was the green and the pink eggs, but I enlarged it, took out just the center section. This is all done on Procreate. And I smushed it or I blended it around I didn't smush it and see I just scribbled on the background I think I wrote mushrooms like a ton of times different directions and that's kind of like what could happen if you were to use this as your sketchbook and then transform it into paint is anybody doing these pages with me out of a different book or the same it doesn't matter this is the one that had the door oh it goes this way it doesn't really matter. Um, and I thought I could turn the mushrooms like different directions. 
I, anyhow, I'm like, maybe I won't give up on the mushrooms. We might add that mushrooms in at the end because we're going to have a couple extra days. Anyhow, um, I added the mushroom. I added the whole thing and I blurred it around, blended it around a lot. I don't think I did anything else to this one. And I mean, to me, not specifically the yellow uh, notebook paper, but you could have a yellow border. You could have lines of white. I just, that's how it can happen. If you manipulate them a little bit, play with them, have fun. Speaking of playing, oh. Speaking of playing, here are sections of lots of stuff. Uh, this is the very first one. Those are those two that I just talked about. These are all from the, the California postcards thing. These are from maybe the month before. Just, just as if I were collaging them in strips on top of each other or quilting with them. I think that looks so cool. And yes, I do like my own paper, but I like other people's papers too. For those comments, kind comments. Very kind. Okay, let's let's move on to excavation here. Okay. Um, somehow, maybe today, I'll fix these. You know what? I'm going to pull this little section out and do it like that. A lot less drama that way. No frappuccinos. Regular coffee. This is my same first cup of coffee. This is a lot of coffee. Hmm. So what is our darkest color here? This. And we can use these scraps too. In this. And oh, we got lots. I may not even need that. Okay. Let's start with the darkest ones and kind of, I'm just going to just start, what do they call it? Color blocking? This is color blocking. The collage way, aka my way. <laughs> I'm kind of just going to do this. And actually... These book pages, these book pages are good to paint because they do funky stuff to paint. Um, oh, what's this? This is the edge of something too. Ooh. Hmm. I don't think that's the right. It's not talking to me. And I could actually. Wow. Okay. Let's do. Let's do this. Hang in there with me. Oh, I have to come up with rattlesnake grass, too. Ooh, that would make some really good dark rattlesnake grass. Ooh. Okay. What if we were to do something like this? This is like the inside. And then we kind of just fill in some of these gaps. Oh, yeah. Love that. Again, abstract, abstract. So now, kind of thinking, I might kind of just leave it. It doesn't, oh, you know what? The tent needs to be up here. That needs to be there. I need another little piece of that. I don't have another little piece. Do I? No. Um, okay, let's see if we can pull out this dark section here. Yeah, and maybe add a little bit more in places. Like there, maybe there. Now we need rattlesnake grass. Rattlesnake grass might come on with stabilos. I, 
I love it. <laughs> it works for me. Now I need to kind of have these the way they're going to be positioned there or I'll forget. This is where I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to teach myself how to achieve these shapes without looking at a picture. Uh oh, it was like that, right? All right. And I, I mean, I don't have to. It's not like I have, you know, a deadline of an art show or whatever. But that's what I would like to teach myself. And maybe, and I see a lot, at least on the YouTube university that I go to, um, a lot of people, you know, pitch things into their sketchbooks and then that's their inspiration for their art. Their, their sellable pieces. Not that I'm looking for sellable pieces. I just always want to be trying to improve. Which I have. I started at rock bottom. But I have... I like, this is what I like. Not every, it's not for everybody and that's okay. That is a-okay. If we all like the same things, we would be robots. We would live in an AI world. <laughs> Might just happen anyhow, but I see. And I, I came across this lady in Scotland, as would have it, that I can't, Olna, Olna something, Olna, oh, I might put a little bit of this in here, just little pieces. She can pull abstracts out of the ocean, out of a dreary day in Scotland. And I was like, wow. And it's, in shapes like this, looking at a mountain, you would think you'd be painting a mountain, you know. No? It comes out with shapes like this. Okay. Um, maybe, 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 maybe not. Stabilos. Maybe Neo Color 2s. She uses Neo Color 2s and Stabilos. I was like, yes. I might make the stem out of this. I'm going to have to with my blue water here. And these do not have to represent rattlesnake grass in a finished product, how I might use them down the road. Just mark making, but I have no artist imagination, and therefore I can use a picture to represent. And now I have something in a sketchbook. It's kind of how these journals are turning into sketchbooks. Oh my God. I kind of like that. You know, I'm almost wishing there were, it, this yellow paper was not behind it, just for a future project. The next project will not have the yellow paper, and I think this might even be, it almost looks like weeds blow, rattlesnake grass blowing in the wind at the Grand Canyon. But it's really an archaeology site on the Sea of Galilee. Right, right. I don't think I'm going to do anything else. I really like that. Is it the diet food? But now this. Is the diet food going to make me a better artist? An artist? <laughs> That's the next journal. <laughs> we are going to eat broccoli today. And we're going to draw broccoli in the abstract. <laughs> I'm glad I can laugh about it. I really like that. A lot. I hope you can see it. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Pretty close. The yellow kind of gives it a, a glare that's not really there. And I'm a poet and I don't know it, but my feet show it because they're Longfellows.
See, even if you took a suction out like that, I, I just think it's fabulous. 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 Okay. Let's see what we're going to do tomorrow. I already forgot what we were looking at yesterday. More mosaics. Oh, was it no? Wait a minute. 55. Okay, let's check 55 off. Otherwise, I'm going to be confused. 57. 55, 56, 57. Okay, it's this. The side of this lion in the mosaic. But again, it has the braided edge, a couple borders, some swirls over here, half a lion head, which we could use that shape. Somebody's hand, which we might omit. And do this abstract too. Maybe I should make some more paper that has these colors in it. How many more pages of this do we have? That that doesn't necessarily have to be. This is gorgeous. The Sea of Galilee. I was probably right in here. That might be Tiberius, but that's where we were for a week. And then we were based out of Jerusalem for a week. Okay, I have that one. Oh, I have one, two, three four, five, five more. I might make a couple. Actually, I think it's more interesting if I can figure out to use what I have already. And make it work. Okay. I still love this idea of the swatches. All right, there's our rattlesnake grass. Oh yeah, this one has staples. We might do it in small things. Like half of a lion head shape here, half of a border in a vine, not a vine, but like a ropey pattern. And maybe kind of an abstract hand, maybe like two fingers or something. I don't know. And then staple them down onto other paper, white paper. I still have some white sitting here and I have tons of white paper out, obviously. What comes after 57, 59? Ooh, okay. These are like old fashioned letter uh, block stamps and a roll of paper, but there is an $8 sticker on it. I would like to have that roll of paper. Um might be able to do the eight somehow and stamp something on here and it looks like a six or a nine or a g maybe g for galilee we'll go with g we can make that work too but first we have this so i'm gonna put my little marker hmm. right there so much fun so much fun. I have a couple other of her books. Oh, oh, this is another favorite called Nomad. For you new people, if you have not heard of her, Robin McClendon, who enables me to do a lot of things. <laughs> talked about this lady. I'm like, what? This one is gorgeous. I kind of wish I had used this one first. For this project but it's okay this is different parts of the world where she has traveled a global approach to interior style i just love everything about this it's kind of like when those people on instagram set up what do they call still lifes or whatever they call these things where they like take a picture of their art but it's all surrounded by the very most appropriate props i think it's um Oh, see, I mean, look at this. Oh. This is on my bucket list. Very short bucket list. Japan. Can you imagine me in a Traveler's Notebook store? Oh my God, in Japan. The Traveler's Factory. I would die. Die. Die, people. So I guess I better still keep up with my diet, right? Right. This one is gorgeous. 
What does page 55 look like? 49, 51, 53, 55. Ooh. Huh. Interesting. The colors of Japan can be the sole inspiration for your interior. My favorite Vivian Westwood wallpaper panel, which is this part of a British flag, it looks like, functions as a head, a bed head and sets the tone for a mix and match of woodblock quilts. Oh. And screen printed and embroidered pillows. The zen of a Japanese garden or a tea ceremony can be recreated. I see where she's going because in Vietnam, up in the mountains, those ladies wore a lot of blue and red. And that's why their traditional dress. But it looks very patriotic, British and or if this was a different flag, American. Oh, oh, this is 59. No, 57. Old fashioned brushes. And a basket like laying across a tub, or I guess this is like a sink. Soap dish housing Japanese brushes in a bamboo ladle for scooping water. Heavenly, heavenly. Create intimacy or texture by leaning up a soji paper screen door, which doesn't even need to be attached. Natural tones of the handmade soap and wide weave cloth make your dream of a natural hot natural hot springs in the mountains of Japan. It's kind of a little out there. Oh, this is one that was Greece, I think. Oh, Italy. Oh, look at that rope. <gasps> is that not the prettiest color? Okay, we need to stop. <laughs> Sabella Court. I got mine on Amazon. They're not cheap, I, as I recall. I think they're like $30 or something in the United States. But they're beautiful books. Beautiful. Oh! United States. San Francisco. What is this? Oh, Shops I Love. San Francisco. Tale of the Yak, Ashby Avenue in Berkeley. Huh. Bell o Okio on Brady Street, San Francisco. Cooking, Divisadero Street, San Francisco. Flax Art and Design, Market Street, San Francisco. Paxton Gate, Valencia Street, San Francisco. We need to go on a tour. Let's see. Huh. Australia, England, France. I can't say those names. Marie Papier, 26 Rue Vavine in Paris. Some of these have white sides, so that would be fun to look at these. If they're even still done, because when was this book done? This is an interiors book, too. Creating beautiful interiors with the things you love. It doesn't say when it was done. Hmm. I do not know. Oh, wait a minute. 2009. 2009. lovely this would be a fun lady to meet i wonder where she lives we'll have to stalk her oh look at this i mean this book is fabulous fabulous Ooh. hill tribe peace simple indigo peace that was that my mother unearthed in thailand oh those ladies in those mountains can definitely do embroidery. Okay. 
I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Lord have mercy. 30 minutes. Okay. Stop, lady. Stop talking, lady. Thank you for watching. Bye.